Oh man, oh man, boy, 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 boy. I know y'all been waiting on this video. I know you guys been waiting on this video. And folks, hey, you know, here it is. Here it is. Uh, forgive the background noise, but guys, I'm finna get in here and I'm finna educate y'all today. Um, before I start this video off, boy, <laughs> Nico Montano, she fine. I had somebody try to argue me down. Man, how can you think Nico's attractive? How can you not think she attractive? <laughs> What's wrong with people? Now, because I find Nico Montano highly attractive, I got to tell the truth. Folks, I, 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 I do, I love coming on here telling you that I told you so. I love to come on here and tell you that I told you so. But I, I told you so. I told you, I told you what was going to be happening. I told you this three years ago. I told y'all this, and people coming around here, man, you just, you just hating on Nico. How can I hate on Nico? I, I, I don't want to hate on Nico. I don't want to hate on Nico. Nico got too much bad luck to be, you know, for me to be hating on her. Like, real talk, Nico got too much bad luck. I, I'm not hating on that. I don't want her bad luck. Please, I do not want to trade places with her. Now, <laughs> would I want to be in the same place with her? Yeah. <laughs> Trading places? No. <laughs> but, look, y'all. Nico, I told you guys three years ago that this was no that she was no flyweight, okay? I said Nico Montano got a lot of water buffalo, and, and there's nothing you can do about that. She got too much buffalo. And and unfortunately, it, it's just it's just what it is. She would make those cuts to 125, you know. Man, she looked like I don't know, she looked like skeletal wife at 125. And I'm like, man, this can't be healthy. I know her kidneys got to be cussing her out. Like, this can't be healthy. And I was saying that years ago. Uh, man, you don't know what you're talking about, man. You're just a guy making videos. I, 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 people would come to my videos saying this, and I'm like, she can't make this weight. Well, fast forward. <laughs> fast forward, here we go. See, I was already right about, uh, I don't know, a couple years ago. I was already right. But, uh, you know, now I'm making this video to just rub it in some more. Uh, because... I said that her genetics, Nico genetics, will always make her a big woman. Okay, her genetics, she's gonna be big. Okay, she's gonna be thick. There's nothing she can do about that. Okay, and now that she's in her 30s, oh, nah, man. Her body ain't trying to lose that weight. No, her body wanna be thick and massive. That's just what that is. That's just how that is. Okay, when Nico Montano stop fighting, man, Nico might get fat. Okay, real talk. Um, <laughs> I've seen Nico in between fights. Now, this girl walk around probably at about 160. I mean, Nico is curvy in between fights. She real curvy. And I'm like, yeah, now that's what's up. That's what's up, Nico. <laughs> but she talked about a bunch of things, okay? And I'm, I'm going to educate you guys. So, look, here's the thing, man. Okay, Nico, she, you know, okay, she said that, well, I didn't consent to a documentary. Well, Nico... That's a lie because you talked about you're making a documentary. And these guys, they made the documentary, okay? Because that's what you asked for. You wanted a documentary. And I'm going to tell you, man, Nico Montano said she didn't get a dime for that. Look, man, <laughs> Nico Montano need to fire her manager. Like, how do you be so dumb as to not get a royalty? Now, if the documentary is free for people to watch, I get it. But there's no way that I'm going to make a documentary like that. And not agree to get paid. Folks, that's just how it is. And Nico even got a new scene in that documentary. <laughs> I mean, she do. Um, and you mean to say he ain't get no money? Like, it's something going on. She need to fire managers, man. Somebody, either Nico did this without her manager knowing about it and just made the decision, or her manager didn't work out a deal with the people that made this documentary. Hell, the people that made the documentary used to come to my live streams. They used to come to our live streams talking about Nico. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here like, dang, man. Like, her manager failed her, man. Somebody, they failed Nico. Because she ain't got no money to show for it. Nico don't have no money to show for that document. She ain't got nothing. And it's stupid. Nico made some dumb decisions. But Nico, here you go. Her problem was making weight. Holler at your boy, Nico. Holler at your boy. I can tell you how to make weight. Now, you're not going to like it. You won't like how I'm telling you how to make weight, but you'll never end up in the hospital and you'll always have enough energy to go fight. You'll have enough energy doing camp. 
you just won't like it. Okay, you will hate every minute of it, but you'll have enough energy. I promise you. I'll let your boy. Okay, we can come up with a plan. I'll hook you up, Nico. I'll hook you up. Everybody think, man, that you know, coach don't know. Coach, no, I know about cutting weight. That's an easy word. Your body just need nutrients. <laughs> Your body just need nutrients. And that's all I say. Okay, but Nico, the problem is, man, she knew starting out she wasn't a 125-pounder, man. But at the time when Nico broke into MMA, the 135-pound division and the 145 division was so tough that coming into that kind of smoke, it, it was going to be rough. Okay, and you want your new fighter to come in with some success, but... The 135 pound division and the 145 pound division at the time, man, it, it was just rough. I mean, it was rough. You had a lot of the Bellator people back when Nico was coming into the sport, they were in their prime. And I'm telling my Bellator had some smoke when these people were in their prime. You know, now, you know, Nico can be competitive now. She can be competitive. These people out of their prime, and Nico could go to Bellator and do a good job. Um, Nico even mentioned the PFL, which to me, I think the PFL would be a better fit. Nico just, I mean, she walks around big, okay? Nico is walking around over 160. I think the PFL would be perfect. It'd be perfect for her because she don't have to have a huge weight cut and she can actually get in there and train. Okay, most of Nico training camps, you know, she inside of a damn plastic bag trying to lose weight. She got towels, you know, wrapped around her head and, and towels wrapped around her body because the only thing that Nico, they're concentrating on is losing weight. This girl don't get to work on her craft. But these are problems, though, and I'm going to tell y'all, a lot of y'all going to hate for me to say this. But these are problems because of not being prepared. Okay, these are problems of preparedness. Nico Montano, if you tell me a problem that Nico had, I'll tell you a problem where she didn't prepare. Okay, and she can tell y'all what she want to tell y'all. But anybody that have this much stuff going on, okay, a lot of stuff, it's because of preparedness. Even the car accident, you can say, well, it's not Nico's fault. And realistically, it's not her fault. But do y'all understand how everything is like a snowball effect? When one thing happened, everything keep happening because you're not prepared. Okay, like seriously, it's more or less like a snowball effect. And when one thing happened, a lot of things keep happening until you get yourself into a circle where you're prepared. And other things too is consistency. You can't balloon up if you're fighting at 135. Even at 145, you can't balloon up to 160 pounds plus in between fights. You can't do that. You can't do that. You have to. You have to follow the code. You have to do your best to try to stay within a tolerable rate, weight range so you can actually make the damn weight that you're trying to fight at. Okay, Nico don't do that. She don't have that discipline. She don't have it. Because she was talking about, well, you know, after I make weight and then the weight just come back on immediately. Yeah, because you start eating and picking out. I mean, folks, this ain't rocket science. This ain't rocket science. Girl, you know you got the, you know you got the damn genetics of a hippo. And you know you're a professional fighter. Why are you going to go and just pig out? I mean, okay, I, I would condone one day of pigging out. But then the day after that, after you eat what you want to eat, then you go right back on to your regimen. You go back on to clean eat. Very clean eating. You go back to that and you stick with that. So you don't have to spend your, your camps trying to, trying to make weight. That, that's stupid. It's stupid. If you don't want to do that, then don't be a professional fighter. That's my thing. Don't be a pro fighter. You know you got to do it. You know your metabolism sucks. So, okay, it is what it is. You have to live with that. But you have to prepare because somebody might be calling you, you know, calling you around the corner. And Nico was saying, they asked Nico, the guy said, hey, would you ever, you know, work with the UFC again? She said, yeah, the UFC ain't going to call you again. Nico, your UFC days are done. They done. Either you're going to have to figure out a way to bring uh, some pay-per-view numbers into the UFC or it, it's just not going to happen. Okay, the UFC for you is over, gone. That's gone. Okay, that's gone. And she was saying, well, maybe Bellator or PFL. I think Scott Coker will bring her in. I think Ray C4 will bring her in. Hell. I mean, if Ray C4 can bring in some of the people he's been bringing in, he's going bring, bring Nico Montano. And, you know, Nico Montano, she's got the Navajo Nation behind her. So, you know, you might bring some viewerships there. So, you know, I can see the PFL. I think they're a better fit. And also, too, the PFL, they do give you a stipend, you know, just to sit on your ass. And that's what Nico liked to do. They give you a $2,000 month stipend, you know, from what I've heard and from what I've read. And, you know, they, they do. They give you that $2,000 month stipend just to sit there in between fights. So I, I think that's a better fit for Nico. I think it's a better fit. You can look in this photograph right here on the screen, man. 
Nico genetically just carries a lot of mass. She does. Okay, it doesn't matter. She carries a lot of mass. And, you know, you're asking your body to take off, you know, a lot of weight. <laughs> a lot of weight. And your body just going to be like, nah, man, <laughs> we ain't losing no more weight. You done. Okay, just, just how it is. Nico has always been a featherweight, okay? She's always been a featherweight. It's just the opportunity at 125 pounds came, and I see, I, I understand, it came. And, you know, you had an opportunity to get into the UFC, so Nico had to find a way to make 125 pounds. Folks, it's not rocket science, it's business, okay? I get it. Nico thought, hey, I walk around at a bigger weight. If I can make 125, I probably can go in here and I probably can dominate or I probably can, you know, use my weight to have a weight advantage. Okay, it was a smart strategy. It's just long-term, health-wise, nah, it wasn't a good strategy. It wasn't a good strategy. Nico need to get everybody around her. She need to get those people out of there, man. And she need to really, if she's going to have a manager, she need to have somebody, man, that's going to, you know, really, really, really do the things a manager's supposed to do, okay? This documentary, had that have been a manager of, like, somebody like Valentina, had that have been a manager of somebody like Nunez, y'all better believe they they not making no documentary without discussing the, the, the legalities of it, how much money this thing finna bring in, what my client, how much money my client finna get. They not finna let that go down without discussing the legalities of it. And, and it's like, Nico, okay, what, did you tell your manager? I mean, you went in there, and you made a documentary, but nobody talked about how you're going to get compensated for this documentary. And now you're in that documentary. You got, you know, you got your naked ass showing. I mean, <laughs> dang, Nico. Uh, uh, Nico just dumb. Like, and folks, I hate to call her that because she's so beautiful, but she's dumb. Just dumb. Like, what, <laughs> what was she thinking, y'all? What was she thinking? What on the God's hot sun was Nico thinking? She wasn't thinking. This girl ain't got no brain. Look, man, look. I hope that, you know, Bellator the PFL work for I think the PFL is a better fit for Nico, to be honest. I think that's a much better fit. She probably can make a little bit more money in the PFL. And, you know, Nico can bring, you know, she's got some, she's got an audience with her. That that that's a really surefire thing. Um, this girl's still talking about this stuff. You know, talking about how the UFC, you know, how they did or how they treated her and this and this and this. Nico, the problems that persist that came from you are the problems that you created. You created these problems. You created the problems. You guys created the problem when you thought that you could be a flyweight. And unfortunately, it was a risky call. But see, now you're dealing with the consequences of the choices that you chose to make. Now you're dealing with that. Okay, now your body, you're just beginning to be healthy again. I mean, did you see Leah Letson? Did you see Leonidas Letson? I'm going to tell you. She took a, I mean, she took a long layoff because of weight cuts. And Leah still, to me, she's not at 100%. She still didn't look like the fighter she was before the weight cuts. Nico, you lucky. You lucky that you, your body wasn't totally decimated. You lucky. But the thing of it is, if you try to go down to be a bad weight again, your career's over. It's gone. Okay? You might as well forget it. You can't make that weight. You can't make the weight. You, you need to let go. You need to let go, and you need to go ahead and let your body fight in a natural weight class. That's 145 and 155. Let's use this half of your career because you say you still want to fight, okay? Let's actually use some common sense, okay? Because you lack, you lack common sense. You know, and I'm sitting here and I think, how can somebody so nice looking be so just dumb? Like, no common sense. But I tell you what, though. You better have some, because how many more years of fighting you think you got left? <laughs> Two, three, you better hurry up, and you better get signed soon, because Father Time is undefeated.